up guys welcome to my channel my name is John um, I'm gonna be covering drones technology photography and sustainability and some outdoor adventures so please subscribe if you're interested in these topics and um, I'll be making videos on them so today I wanted to talk about buying a used drone um, I personally went with the DJI mini 2 SE um, it does not shoot 4K, it shoots 2.5K, but I actually haven't even used it in 2.5K. I've only used 1080p so far, and it, it works incredible. Um, so this right here is a cheaper drone. Um, just a 4K drone that you find on the internet. Uh, they're all over the place. It's a knockoff to the Mini 2 SE. You can see that they look pretty similar. Um, so with the DJI, you can feel and see the quality. Uh, this thing weighs, it weighs 249 grams, but this thing, it's just, even with the battery in it, I mean, just feels cheap and flimsy and you get what you pay for. But actually the camera's pretty good on it, but I would suggest getting one of these if you're a new pilot who never flown before. Um, it's good to learn on. It does some cool tricks you can do hit a button and it does barrel rolls, uh, records pretty good video. Like I said, it does not have the three axis gimbal like the DJI Mini 2 or any of the DJI drones for that matter. Um, this one you actually need to manually adjust the camera. So you can set it where you want it, fly, and you're going to get the motion in the video. It, every little movement of the drone you're going to see. This one, you can set it so that you get that FPV style of flight. So it looks like you're, you can see the movement when you bank and roll and all that kind of stuff. Um, this one, you don't have the option to get stable video. This one, you do. This thing, it looks like a camcorder on a tripod in the air. It's incredible. You've seen the videos. So um, when purchasing a DJI Mini 2, or any DJI product for that matter, make sure that the person you get it from unbinds it. They can bind it to their account if they've used it before, and they need to unbind it before you're actually able to set up your own account and use it. So make sure that they do that. If you're buying secondhand, if you're buying from Facebook Marketplace or something like that, which is where I got this, um, I actually got this for 250 bucks. The guy had never used it. He never bound it to his account. So when I was with him, I set it up, you know, logged in, made sure that I put in the um, registration number and everything, which is the serial number, I believe, it's inside of it. I know it's on the box. So let me show you the box and what you should actually be getting. This is the controller. And make sure that it has the controller um, toggles these actually go into the bottom of the controller right here which is pretty neat well thought out they just screw on like that so make sure that those are on your controller um, pull out the arm there's actually a little cord in here where you attach your phone and then your phone attaches to that so that you can view it while you're flying. Now, they have different cords. Um, I have my Type-C in right now for my phone. They also have the iPhone and um, a micro USB. So make sure that you have all three cords. You should have a Type-C, <clears throat> the iPhone, and a micro USB. You're also going to get a screwdriver, two sets of new propellers, and your quick start guides. So make sure that everything is included in the box. This is the box. <clears throat> All of your propellers and everything go inside of here. So make sure everything's in there with your cords and all of that. Uh, the drone actually goes inside of this and your gimbal cover, which is right here. 
and that just clips on like that and that protects your camera and your gimbal from getting messed up when you're moving it around or storing it or setting it down okay so now let's go over inspecting the drone now I would highly recommend getting the fly more combo if you can it comes with three batteries it comes with a uh, double or triple battery charger which is really nice because with this one by itself without that you need to put the battery in which I usually just leave mine in it actually makes it kind of convenient um, it has a US uh, I'm sorry a type C charging port right here and a memory card slot right here this is a micro US uh, I'm sorry a micro SD card so make sure that it is either included or you get one you're not going to be able to fly this without um, your micro SD you can fly it but you won't be able to do your quick shots and some of the key features to record um, it does not have local memory so you're going to want the micro SD. I have a 32 gigabyte. I've shot probably 15 or 20 videos on it, um, ranging from five to 10 minutes or so. Um, and I'm still have space on it. I actually haven't deleted anything yet. So get yourself one of these. This is the SanDisk Extreme. Um, it's a, a U3 A1 V30. So Highly recommend the SanDisk. They're a great quality memory card. Now, going over the drone, again, make sure that you have your gimbal cover, everything that is included in the box. You should have your screwdriver for the propellers, extra propellers, your three different cords for your different phones, micro SB, S, micro USB, iPhone, and iPhone is the lightning one, and then the Type-C. So you have to charge your, your drone with the Type-C if you don't have the um, Fly More combo. So if you can find one that's used, I would highly recommend getting that. Um, go over everything. You can actually check the in the DJI Fly app, which I highly recommend. If you're going DJI, get the Fly app before you actually go to look at it. Have the seller send you some good quality photos. Um, of everything up close certainly the camera and the gimbal but with the batteries within the fly app you can actually check the battery life cycles see how many times it's been charged discharged and make sure that it doesn't have any bulges or anything like that everything should be nice and square um, you can see how it looks right here you can also see pictures of them online brand new so that's how your battery should look um, again check everything before you walk away and hand the guy your money or girl so um, I would highly recommend also if you're buying extra batteries for it which I'm looking into right now there's a lot of knockoffs they look just like that even in the listing they say DJ they don't specifically say DJI up front but they say works with the DJI compatible with words like that so Make sure that it is actually DJI product. Otherwise, you're not sure what you're going to get. The quality could be not as good. Um, the DJI Intelligent Flight Batteries, I would recommend getting. Um, I think they hold, hold charges a little bit better. They also have a slightly better uh, lifespan as well as flight time. So I have flown this thing. Um, it has three different modes. It's got Cine Mode, Normal, and sport now sport mode you're gonna get full speed the drone will actually give you um, very high pitch and attack angles uh, roll bank all that kind of stuff when you're in normal mode it pitches pretty well not quite as steep still goes fast using these two modes eat your battery up but even flying in those two modes with the approximate flight time of 31 minutes that they call for with this battery um, I've still been able to fly at 20 25 minutes with no problem um, in cine mode I like to go to my destination I'll fly where I want to get my shots in normal or sport mode to get there then I'll put it in cine mode that's where you're gonna get your nice clean shots where it doesn't spin rotate as fast 
Um, the camera moves slightly slower. The drone moves slower, so everything looks nice and fluid and, and cinematic, which is why it's called cine mode. Now, when you're turning these on, you need to hit the button, power button, hit it once, and then hold it in, and that's going to allow it to turn on. If you just hit it once, it won't turn on. That's a safety thing so that if you have it in a backpack or something like that, things knock into it, it's not going to turn on and run your battery down. So that is how you turn that on. That's the controller. And then for the drone, make sure that you take your gimbal cover off first because it's going to move around. Always be extra careful with this gimbal. It's going to move around when you turn it on. Press it once, hold it in. And you can see that it does a self-check. Everything kind of moves around and gets adjusted so that it's ready for flight. Um, then within the DJI Fly app, which you're going to need to download, like I said, I would recommend downloading that beforehand so that you can make sure that it's not binded to the previous user. If it is, you will not be able to fly it. DJI will not be able to unbind it. There's nothing you can do. You will have a nice paperweight that you paid however much for. I paid 250 bucks for this, $250 paperweight. So um, when you get there, make sure it's unbinded, go into the Fly app, try to register it into the Fly app yourself so that you can see that it flies. Make sure everything is nice and tight. There's no cracks anywhere. Um, certainly inspect the camera, the gimbal. Now you can see, just because I have it on, that that gimbal is staying level. Now that's what you're going to get in normal flight mode. It's going to stay level so that you get nice, smooth video. Again, you can go into the Fly app. There is a ton of settings. Um, I love photography. I do photography. So I enjoy using the uh, manual settings that you can do on there. Just like a DSLR or a nice, even 35 millimeter camera, you can set your aperture, you can set your uh, frames per second in it, you can set your um, exposure value, all of that stuff. So I would definitely fly it when you're there. Make sure that you can bind it to your app and your drone, your controller, everything on your phone so that you know that it works. If there's any reason that it doesn't, have the user or the, the seller uh, check that his drone is not still binded in his app. And if it is, it's no big deal. All he needs to do is go to, I think it's the setting section within the app and he can just unbind it. And there you go, you're good to go. So I saw someone say on a DJI forum that they bought a used one, but they had, um, they bought it used. It was still binded to the person's account. Uh, he had, spoke over chat with the DJI customer representative. He sent them pictures and proof of purchase and screenshots of his messages and the whole buying process of the person that he bought it from and, you know, sent proof of purchase basically. So if you do buy from a third party or, you know, an online seller or something like that, save screenshots, save all your messages just in case, you know, something goes wrong, you have proof that you did buy it. That I'm not 100% sure if it's true that DJI will actually be able to unbind it, you know, even with all that stuff. I'm not sure. It's something somebody said on one of the DJI forums, but I would look into it just to make your life easier. Don't, you know, don't run into that issue. Make sure that it's not binded to their account. Bind it to yours. Fly it. If it flies, you're all good. Now, make sure that you bind the controller and the drone, because if you do not, you will only be able to use, let's say you buy just the drone, then you get a controller separately. If that, if another controller is still bound to the Fly app or the drone has another controller bound to it, you'll be able to use it. Um, I think five times after that, you will not be able to use it again. So you'll have a drone that is registered to your account, but you won't have the controller. You won't be able to use any other controller that will be the end of it. I'm not sure if you can, again, go to the DJI Fly, um, uh, DJI Forum or their chat or whatever and find out if you can 
somehow unbind the old controller or bind a new one. It's just a headache thinking about it. So save yourself the headache and make sure that everything is unbound. Um, all right, so I think that's about all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, please subscribe. I'm gonna be doing lots of videos on drones, technology, photography, um, and outdoor adventures and sustainability practices as well. So I love the earth, I love the outdoors. I would like to be able to preserve it for you know my kids when I have them, <laughs> uh, my nephew, the entire generations following us. So something to think about. Please subscribe. I'm really trying to be able to use this to get out to as many people as possible. I wanna be able to help. So if you have any questions, if you have any issues, um, even if you just want to share, you know, your stories, your photos, and you can follow me at Davidson Tech Time. I'm making this podcast, these videos, and this is actually my first one, so I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a wonderful day and weekend, and I'll see you soon.